All right, so you may remember a while back, I did a review video of this 1,000 watt portable solar generator, which is like a bring your own battery, sort of a DIY uh, solar generator. And I was extremely thrilled with this. I don't think you could build this thing for the price of all the parts. So it's a, the, the easiest, best, fastest way of putting together a DIY solar generator. Now, I reached out to the city and let them know how thrilled I was with this, and they decided to send me out their newest pro edition of this that adds several new features that I think are really, really cool. So let's go ahead and get into that. And what I'm going to do here is I have, you remember that I did a, a doctor prepare video where I cut the battery open. Well, this was the perfect solution to utilize that battery that I cut open. I have that put inside of here, as you can see. So we're going to take that battery out of there and swap it out to here. Now, right off the bat, the, one of the things that I like about the new one is this, this switch is much nicer. This one here feels a little bit cheap. It's still pretty rugged and firm, but this is really much easier and smoother to use. There's no problem with this. It's just a minor thing, but I really, really like that. The, the other uh, big upgrade is that it has the wireless charging if your phone supports that, just setting it up here like a modern power station sort of thing has. And so that's really nice. We'll demonstrate that when we get this battery swapped out. We're just gonna go through the features now that are different. I'm gonna quickly pause this video for a moment and ask you to subscribe to the YouTube channel. So go ahead and click that subscribe button and the like button as well while you're at it. Then ring that notification bell to get, to get notifications. I'd really appreciate it. Now let's get back to it. So this original one has 175 amp hour Anderson plug and then three additional 50 amp hour Anderson plugs that go both ways, with their input and output. That's a really cool feature, but in a lot of ways, this is an excess. You're, I can't imagine any use case really where you'd need to have this many ports. And then the black one here is for the built-in 10 amp uh, MPPT solar charge controller. So what this one changed is there's a single 175 amp hour uh, bi-directional Anderson port and one 50 amp hour and then the same uh, 10 amp AP MPPT solar charge controller input. So this is dedicated. So you could expand this very easily if you wanted more than 10 amp hours with an external MPPT charge controller could plug right into this and charge that battery right in there. Uh, then you could actually have an additional battery as well. So the, the expandability of this is really cool. And that's one of the main things that I like about it. Now, the other thing that's changed here is these handles. Uh, this is a solid handle built into the top and the bottom. So when you grab it, you got a really good grip. So there's these, this one has these rope handles. I find that I don't really use the rope handles anyway on this. I tend to use this anyway because I feel like I got a firmer grip on it. So this makes this even more of a firm grip because there's a slot here where you can stick your fingers up in and you get a really good grip on it. These are essentially the same. There's a PD port and a QC port at one of each of these and there's a little button here to turn them off and on just like this one. Pretty much the exact same thing here. And I, I find that to be more than enough ports. So let's go ahead and swap this battery out and fire this up and test it out. All right, so I got these screws undone here and we'll pop this lid off of here. And disconnect this battery. Now I went ahead and shoved some foam that I had laying around in here just to tighten this up and make sure it's good and snug in there. Whoops. Blooper reel. Get 
that off of here. And get pull that battery out. Go ahead and get a look at these internals here while we're while we're at it. What I can see anyway. So this has a uh, sheet of protective plastic over the, the whole thing here, which is a little different than the last one also. Let's see if we can just... All right, we got our Anderson plugs here. This looks to be the same MPPT charge controller that was in the other previous one. Our plugs here. And our inverters down in there. Metal plate. And you can't really see a whole lot down in there, but appears to be the same wires, which I'm guessing would be like about a four gauge. All right, let's go ahead and get that battery in here and check this out. All right, we'll get our straps propped up here. Secure that up good. And there is a little bit of a, a, a jiggle in there. And I solved that just shoving in a little bit of foam in there. And that helped take care of some of the jiggle a little bit. Go ahead and get this hooked up. comes with this protective uh, tape on these ends here. Again, I always like to check this, even if this is off, I like to use this uh, resistor to charge the capacitors in the inverter before I touch the fully connect the battery. We'll put that on there for about five, ten seconds or so. Just to kind of make sure. That's good. There we go. And in our bag of goodies, here was all the screws that go in. We'll do that after. We're going to check and sure make sure everything works here. Turn that on. Turn the battery on. And uh, right away, I love this display much better than the previous one. I, again, one of the big upgrades for this version is, and it does cost a little bit more because of this, is this remote monitor so this is great if you have a van or a small camper or you're an overlander or something like that you want to tuck this in the back somewhere and then be able to control and turn it off and on from this remote let's go ahead and hook that up now and see what it looks like All right, we got a nice long cord here. I'm not sure, that's at least probably 15, 20 feet or something. So on the back here is, uh, looks like, like an ethernet type port, RS485. Plug that side into there. Get our other one plugged into here. And there is our remote monitor. All right. So there's our remote monitor. It's basically the exact same duplicate of this screen. And uh, you can go off and on. I think this has to be off in order to have this control it. So basically a bypass for this switch here. And that shows you the current state of the battery, 13.3 volts, 112 volts of AC, and the current temperature 
and your wattage draw. So let's go ahead and hook some stuff up here and uh, test this inverter. And uh, I think we'll just go ahead and make us a cup of coffee with our electric uh, tea kettle. One of the other upgrades that they did on this unit is there's two AC output ports instead of just one on the other, which is nice. Let's go ahead and get this tea kettle plugged in here and turn it on. So we're doing 561 watts. We'll go ahead and plug in our heat gun here and uh, add that to it. 1,000 watts. So we got that peg to 982, 1,000 watts. We'll go ahead and let that run for a minute. And that's the tea kettle and the heat gun uh, on high. We are getting a dipping down here a little bit, 110. That's still pretty good for pulling right around 1,000 watts, 110 volts. It's leveled off to be 982 watts now, it seems like. So the fan has kicked on here. Put the two fans on this. Yeah, the fan is, is relatively quiet. Much quieter than my regular 1,000 watt inverter. So it's dropped our voltage down to 12.6 volts, pulling 561 watts to boil our kettle here. We'll go ahead and try this pad out and see it charges up. All right, so to go over the pricing on this, it's at the current time $218 for the base unit and I think $258 if you wanted to add a 20 amp charger that I, I don't have one of those to demonstrate but I'm sure that it has a Anderson connector that would plug into the side over here. I have their 30 amp uh, one that sold separately for substantially more than that. So that's probably a really good deal on a 20 amp charger. The previous model uh, was 100, at the, again, at the current time, it's $168. And the same thing, it's about $48, $50 more to add the chargers. I think the charger would probably be worth adding for sure. And again, I don't believe you could make either one of these for the price. I think that this is definitely worth the upgrade price from the previous one but I'm really happy with the previous non-pro edition as well. Either one I think would be a really good choice and a heck of a lot cheaper than buying a, a pre-made portable power station and this is serviceable. Inside of this one, the, the advantage I feel like is the 10 amp charge controller. There seems to be enough room in there that I've seen some 20 amp or 30 amp even uh, charge controllers that I think you could probably swap out in that space. But uh, like I said before, you could add your an, addition, an external MPPT charge controller and expand this, you know, quite a bit. So unlike a you buy a pre-made uh, portable power station or solar generator or whatever, even the, the good ones now, they have these expansion batteries. Well, the expansion batteries cost more than, than this. And you don't need anything special to, to create an expansion battery. It'd be as simple as plugging it into here and it'd be, it would charge both batteries. It'd be like running them in parallel. It doesn't get any simpler than that using the same charge unit and you don't need anything special like you do with other uh, portable power stations. All in all, I think it's a good buy and I'm comfortable recommending it. Uh, I got links for this stuff down in the description below. Uh, they're not even affiliate links. Uh, I just really do like the power station. If you want to see the full review of the previous edition, I'll go ahead and drop a link to that video right here. 
And if you're interested in the Dr. Prepare uh, review I did, where I cut it open, I'll go ahead and drop that one right here. That's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next one.